The following is a transcript of a conversation between Matthias de Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am. 1st November 2020, here and now. Me, space and time, perhaps the most fascinating duality of all, and strangest in turn. Our life is linked to space in a direct way, and to time in an indirect way, which conditions our life almost as if it were space itself. But even if we all know that these two concepts exist, most do not know or do not know what they really are and how they support each other. And in turn, something catches my attention, the concept lately so mentioned, here and now. It is as if suddenly many people have awakened to understand that the most important thing is to live in the present, because it is the only thing over which we have control and awareness. Therefore, we have no choice but to live it. But I don't feel that way. So what are the concepts of time and space that we should understand, and what does it mean to live here and now? I am. Well, this probably eliminates the idea of such duality from the beginning. Time comes from the Indo-European temp, which means to stretch, to extend. Space comes from the Indo-European spau, which means to pull. Me. Wait a minute. They mean the same thing? I am. Yes. Me. But then why do we take them as different and dual things from each other? I am. Because one stretches on one side, in negative, and the other stretches on the other, in positive. But both are forces that stretch reality and expand them. Me. It makes sense like this. I am. In your concept of time, it is related to what happens. Time, then, is a unit of measurement of facts that helps to order concepts that can only be understood from the mind, but not from reality. Me. In what sense? I am. Is it possible to measure the past? Is there anything that allows you to touch what really happened? Me. If I touch bones or an ancient monument, would it be touching the past? I am. If you touch, it is present. It simply means that there is a bone there and that the monument is a rock. You call it a person and a monument, but they are not. The past, as such, does not exist from the point of view of space, nor the future, because they are not countable by physics, nor is there anything that assures you in the five senses that what you touch is past, because the senses can only perceive the present. Me. What about memory? When, for example, I remember my childhood, and my taste feels the taste, or my sense of smell feels the aroma, I am. They feel. For your cells, that is not memory, it is present, because they are feeling it. Only you and your mind know that this is not happening. Me. It seems complex to understand. I am. But it's actually very easy. Everything you perceive of the world is due to a reaction in your senses. That is to say, that for your senses there is nothing outside until you interpret it inside by the connections it makes in the brain. If your brain generates a reaction, well, your senses will be the ones that will interpret that idea in the present. Therefore, the past is only a concept. You divide time into a sacred trinity that you call past, present, and future. This trinity is conceptual because what it does is describe three aspects of a space, the expressed, the experienced, and the projected. But in each case, there will be only one thing in transformation. Therefore, there will be nothing in the past or in the future. For the only thing that you can perceive now is simply what is and nothing else. The rest are just interpretations of the intelligent mind. A mineral, a plant, an insect, and most animals fail to interpret the time of things, only space, what is, what they feel and perceive without more. Me. And what constitutes what they perceive? I am. Space. It also has its sacred trinity, which you call high, wide, and deep. This defines the law of the third dimension, which is why it is called the third, because it is composed of three dimensions of space, that is, extensions of reality in which one can move. Dimension comes from the Latin di and metiri, meaning to and measuring, respectively. That is, measure the parts of something. Thus, the third dimension would be to measure the three directions of an object. Those three directions, in turn, in the third dimension, will be expressed in the three times. This is how you understand that the three times and three spaces are nothing more than two forces stretching the same object forward it to transform. Me. But how would time be a force if it doesn't really exist, as you say? I am. 
Let's look at it from first, the human point of view. Your life is given through time, and everything you do relates to it. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, solstices and equinoxes, years, lustrums, decades, centuries, ages, millennia, eras, periods, all calculated by the movement of the sun, the moon, the stars, the change of the climate. But yesterday we said that it is not the sky that moves, but the earth. That is, what you consider passage of time is based on the concept that things go through the sky to measure moments. However, by not moving, then, the only thing that determines the times is you from your perception of movement of something that is really static. Old age, the deterioration of a body, is not due to the passage of time, but to the expansion of its cells. The division of them begins to be exhausted, losing the ability to multiply, and that produces death. Actually, time never passed. It just happened that the cells stopped multiplying. Days and nights do not mark the passage of real time, but show the process of Earth's rotation. The seasons do not change by time, but by the movement of the planetary axis in its periods of translation and precession. The hours are calculated as the light that affects a territory of the planet in its rotation process. As you will see, all the concepts of time you may have absolutely depend on the ability of space to move. They are just ideas, ways of naming the physical processes that happen. Me. But we have talked about space also being a construction, so in reality it is also a perception. I am. Exactly. Space is nothing more than the harmonic or distorted interaction of vibrations that generate energy, and in turn this gives rise to particles that will be arranged in a coherent way to save energy. That is, space is nothing more than the distorted expansion of a pulse. Both space and time are summarized as those two elastic concepts that expand the universal mind to experience processes. The paradox of this duality is that the only reason matter expands is because of the need to live a process. Therefore. It is in a certain way, time, that originates space. Time is equal to nothingness, to the creative matrix network which projects ideas, thoughts, planning, where everything is possible. And from this awareness is that the vibration that unites thoughts arises, thus giving rise to the creation of space. Space is directly related to time because it is its creator. Time being that inner world that projects to the outer world that will end up being space. Me. Ugh, it is an Ouroboros. But if you say that time creates space, but space is the only thing that makes us perceive time, then what is the meaning of this duality? I am. Order. It is a way in which the mind orders the internal and the external. The human concept of time is not what time really means. As I told you, the only existing concept is the elastic mind stretching its connections, expanding them like strings. Me. String theory. Time and space are nothing more than strings that tighten and relax, creating the perceptions of everything that exists. But they are the same. I am. Just like beyond the genitals, a man and a woman share the same genes. Dual concepts are mere expressions, nothing else. Me. So what is real between the two? I am. Eternity. Some people know this as eternal present. The only way to mention the strings that manifest all space and time is the concept here and now. Me. But it's not related to the present, right? I am. No, that's a misconception. The present is one of the three conceptual times that is also non-existent. Many humans consider the phrase here and now to sum up the fact that nothing exists or matters other than what happens right now and where I am. That's actually called presenteeism. This concept implies that one detaches oneself from the universal consciousness in order to live only from the perception of the ego. It is a tempo-spatial self-reference that is based on the personality and the perception of the individual before the reality that he has projected, when in reality it is much more complex than that. Yesterday we mentioned that the universe is a circle that becomes point and a point that becomes a circle and that observation is the only real thing, since observed and observer are the two polarized extremes of an expression. That observation, that emptiness, that single mind, then, inhabits all possible spaces being fixed, and lives all possible processes without having to move. 
Here is the idea of the universe that summarizes all existing sites, and now is the concept of the universe that summarizes all possible moments. Me. So to say here would be like acknowledging that my existence is not only in this place where I am, but that all the places inhabit me. All the places, continents, worlds, galaxies. All in the I am coexist as one. And now would imply that past, present, and future merge with each other, making me at this moment a conjunction of all possible processes. I am. When you leave one of the extremes, both from the vision of time and from the vision of space, that is, when you transcend the duality of the observed and the observer to become the observation, and space and time become the words ethereal and eternal, you realize that both arise from expanding the ether. Ether comes from the Indo-European aether, which means to burn, and describes the process in which fire, by burning things, shows its true essence hidden in them, nothingness itself, for everything disappears. This idea is that the pure is invisible to the eyes, that things are composed of immeasurable existences, and that therefore they cannot be dimensioned, only multidimensional. Thus you understand that here and now remind you that you are only the flexible mind of the cosmos stretching, curling its strings, but all of them are in you, and all your history, past, present, and future, coexist in some way in you as well as all the spaces you have occupied in your existence. Me. It's a very... big. It's so complex that... I am. That we should have summarized it in something very easy, here and now. Me. So to find the balance of everything, of all the things that we have talked about this month, is simply to remember that we are a point a center, expanding in circles through the process of infinite and eternal observation, which stretches and extends into two primary concepts that we call here and now, and that in experimentation we will interpret as space and time. I am. That's right. Therefore, when you seek the balance between all things, simply remember that you are all things. Me. I am here and now. Awesome.